with a purpose. And so I said, God, why does this keep happening? And so I was driving in the car, and um, I was looking at some poems. I said, one day I want a house like that. And the Lord just kept, just, he kept showing me series and sequence of events that were just flashing through my mind. And I started crying. I became overwhelmed. This keeps happening to me. It keeps happening for me. And I was in the car by myself, and I, I said, God, I thank you. I won't complain. I'll trust you. So I started, the, the lyrics just started coming to me. And I said, my seed is blessed. My body is blessed. My body is blessed. It keeps happening for me. And then we we'll cover our family. I'm covering my family. I'm making bad decisions. Destroying every day. Destroying 
me save my life Everything before that was just a blur I was wild, living real foul I just want right
Tonight, just put some hearts in the comments. A little, uh, like the pastor say, let us see the hearts. Let us hear the, see the fire on tonight. Amen. Um, we are about to get started, um, and I'll do the shout outs. Let's go ahead and have a um, a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you on tonight, God. We thank you, uh, most gracious. Uh, God, our most merciful God, uh, for this opportunity, God. Um, we're coming before you on tonight just to hear from you, God. Um, so whatever it is that you would have for your daughters to hear on tonight, God, I ask that you uh, remove me now, God, and fill me with your spirit. Remove all nervousness, God. Remove all fear um, so that your daughters can actually hear directly from you. Amen. Um, now, God, I ask a special blessing over the women who are on the line tonight God uh, you know what the desires of their hearts are so I ask that you start moving right now God start moving in their lives right now God in the mighty name of Jesus um, now God we will continue to give you all the honor all the glory that you are deserving of it is in your son Jesus name that we pray amen and thank you God amen amen uh, sister Ernie Racy Mitchell how you doing on tonight Helena I see Helena's online tonight. Uh, we got Sister Jones in the building on tonight, in the virtual building on tonight. Uh, Sister Lori Ann, how are you on today? Let me grab my phone so I can scroll and see some more people. Sister Linda Johnson, how are you? Sister Deborah Barker, good evening to you. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, to Sister Lisa Franklin, good evening to you. To my mother, good evening to you. Sister Beverly Ann Van Willis, good evening to you. I had to, I had to say your whole name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's because it's got that rhyme in there, and you can't help but to say it, right? Sister Kenya Carter, good evening to you. Nene, good evening to you. Sister Marilyn, hey girl, how are you? I said hey girl. I'm sorry, sister girl, but Sister Marilyn, hey, how are you on tonight? Um. Let's get ready for a Bible study on tonight. You can continue to invite if you need to. But I will ask you that if you have not already liked the video, please like it. If you have not had an opportunity to share it, please share it. There is a share button at the bottom down here. And it says share in the left-hand corner of your Facebook Live. You can click on it and share the live. You can share it now or you can share it afterwards. But please do share. We want to do our part in spreading the gospel we don't know what someone is in need of uh so we want to make sure we share amen amen let's see uh sister Marilyn say hey girl hey hey listen y'all uh because i won't see you in december and christmas time is my favorite holiday and you know um so i'm gonna be wearing these like shiny shirts because <laughs> It's holiday, like if you go to a holiday party. So this is like a holiday party on tonight. Amen. So don't make fun of me. Don't talk about me. But hey, let's go ahead and get started. You know how we start off every Tuesday. We start off every Tuesday with our honorees for tonight. And we got three responses back this week. So I'm going to pull them up really quick so you can see them. Our first one, and y'all make sure y'all give it up for these ladies. Amen. Give it up for them on tonight. Give them, show them some love. Sister Linda Jones, how are you on tonight? I need you to put some hearts and some fire in the chat on tonight for these ladies. So our first lady on tonight is Sister Cheryl Davis. Amen. 
Woo, Sister Cheryl. Listen, Sister Cheryl, here's some fun facts about her that she shared with us. She's been married for 35 years. Oh, 35 years to Deacon Allen Davis, y'all. She has three children, Rashad, uh, Allen, and Letitia. I hope I'm saying that right. She has four beautiful grandchildren. We know how much she loves her family, okay? She has a 27-year-old uh, grandchild. That is Her name um, is Carrington. She has Alana, who is 10. Ethan is 8. And Naima is 6. Wow. Okay, Sister Cheryl. Now, Sister Cheryl's favorite color is red, just in time for the holidays. Uh, she absolutely, and we all know this because we love to live vicariously through her um, on Facebook, but she absolutely loves to travel. Her go-to scripture on tonight is Philippians 4.13. Y'all give it up for my girl Cheryl Davis on tonight. Give her some hearts. Give her, I see we got some hand claps in the comments on tonight. Okay, and our next honoree is Sister Faith Forte. Woo! Sister Faith Forte. Listen, Sister Faith Forte, she has been married for 27 years. Y'all, listen, these ladies have been married, okay? 27 years. She has three children and nine grandchildren. Woo! She, her, her favorite color is French blue not just any blue y'all but it's french blue i had to look it up and see what it was like and it's actually very very pretty it's french blue her go-to scripture is nehemiah 4 and 20 specifically you always fight for me y'all give it up for sister faith forte on tonight listen sister faith forte uh, is our Sunday school teacher. And if you have not been logging in on Sundays, you definitely need, definitely need to log in. She teaches a great lesson. So give it up for our, our great Sunday school teacher, Sister Faith Forte, on tonight. Amen. Amen. And our third person on tonight <laughs> is Sister Kenya Carter. Okay? Sister Kenya Carter, she has two vibrant young men in her life you know uh three's company they make up three's company okay that is none other than evan and gavin carter okay her favorite color is yellow listen if you don't know already you should know but she loves her some football y'all she loves some football and she likes to talk trash too okay i have to Hear that around here, but and her favorite TV show is Good Times, y'all. It's Good Times. Now that's all she really watches is football and Good Times because she she has she doesn't watch like movies. I'm gonna put some of her dislikes out there. She's never um, seen the color purple, so let's let's help her out. Maybe somebody can buy that movie for her for uh, Christmas. But uh, <laughs> Sister Ernest said the preacher. Okay, her go-to scripture, everybody should know this already, it's Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly, abundantly, amen. All right, so give it up for my girl, KT Carter, on tonight. She don't like when I say that, KT. Give it up for Kenya on tonight. Uh, I need to see some hearts. I need to see some fire on tonight for our ladies. Listen, to all of our ladies on tonight, We've been doing this since March, and we do this because we want to honor the women of the nine. We have deemed it Women's History Year at 9th Street, and obviously we're going to go into 2022 doing the same thing because we, we haven't even gotten to everybody. There are so many still that we still need to get to, but on tonight I want to tell these three ladies, Sister Cheryl Davis, Sister Faith Forte, and Sister Kenya Carter that we honor you, um, we love you, and we thank you for your service uh, to the kingdom. We thank you for your commitment. And uh, we just want you to know how much we care and appreciate you. So this is just a little something that we can do just to show you how much we uh, love you and we care about you. So we honor you on tonight. You are our honorees 
for tonight. Of course, we will post these later in our page. You can go in and you can comment as much as you like. Amen. So let's go ahead and get to what we came to get to on tonight. We said it was going to be some word and some tacos on tonight. So, yes, all the ladies, they are, the ladies of the nine are special ladies. All of them are. Listen, on tonight, I we don't have a, a topic or a... um or a, 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 a title. I, I put one in there. Um, I pinned it in there. But we're still talking about preparation and expectation. And um, we're going to just pick up where we left off on last Tuesday. We're going to travel back to the widow woman once again on tonight. We, we're still dealing with. So we were in the 21 days of prayer. And some of us earnestly had been praying for uh, something to to happen for a door to open but we've been talking about when the door opens what happens next and um if the door hasn't opened yet what are we supposed to be doing in lieu of that door opening so we started talking about preparation and expectation on last week and we're going to hit on some of the same points from last week and we're going to talk about that on tonight but this is what i need you to type in the comments for me are three words preparation expectation manifestation and i want you to put them in that order because that's how they have to go in that order expectation cannot come before preparation manifestation can't come before preparation or preparation at the end it goes preparation expectation and then manifestation amen so i need you to grab your bibles on tonight and i told you grab your bible your paper, paper Bible, because you don't lie. You can't leave the live and go to your Bible. I need you to grab your Bibles on tonight, a pen and a notepad. Sister Ernest, I already know you got your notepad ready. I've seen her notepad, y'all. She takes some amazing notes. Listen, the scripture, our key scripture for the month is Revelations chapter 3. Where we From last week, 3 and 7, where we talked about the open door. Um open doors and this is uh something that we're going to stick to for the remainder of november and remember november is a now or never type of month what does that mean that means it's on us so in this month of now uh what we have to do is start uh preparing ourselves not waiting until next year 2022 we can we need to do it in november um not waiting or not even waiting till december um you know how we do vision boards and i thought about that why wait to 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 do the vision board in january when i can do the vision board tomorrow and start living the vision board right now so it's all about preparation and the key word is our middle word expectation expectancy and that's what we're going to be discussing uh this week and into our last bible study of the year i want to leave that on your mind preparation expectation and manifestation and so in light of what uh we've been talking about i'm just going to piggyback on on uh that open door when that door opens or for some of us who are still waiting on the door because a lot of times God is not it's not us waiting on God but God is really waiting on us and there's some things that we have to do before he actually unlocks that door so let's talk about it let's go to Exodus chapter 30 if someone if you don't see the pen if you can put it in the comments it's Exodus chapter 30 starting at verses 29 to 32 and I'm going to be reading the English standard version on tonight uh, Angel Nicole, how are you on tonight? It's good to see you on tonight. Preparation, expectation, and manifestation. We're looking at Exodus chapter 30, verses 29 through 32 to start. And then we're going to go and travel down, uh, travel to uh, Second Kings later on. But this is the story of Moses on tonight, ladies. This is the story of Moses and in this this story what we're seeing and i'm just going to give you what's going on up to chapter 30 um is that god has been uh preparing moses he's been giving him specific instructions on how to prepare the tabernacle the place where the uh where worship will dwell where god's presence will dwell it has to be prepared a certain way and it has to be prepared in a way uh that god has thought it out not anyone else so god is giving him specific instructions and he's giving him line upon line and precept upon precept on tonight uh verse 29 says you must consecrate them 
So he's giving him the instructions on how to start the preparation. Prepare. You must consecrate them. And that's the Levites, the worshipers, that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. Uh, another another version, I believe it was the Amplified, or maybe it was the Message version, because I read, I was, you know, I like Message, but it says that they may be soaked in holiness, soaked in holiness. He says, so you got to consecrate them that they may be soaked in holiness. Whatever touches them will become holy. Verse 30 says, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. These are the instructions. Verse 31, and you shall say to the people of Israel, this shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. This one oil, this oil that he has prepared. Verse 32, it shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person and you shall make no other like it in composition. It is holy and shall be holy to you now let's think about this god is preparing the tabernacle he is preparing a pattern by which the people will worship daily and he tells moses i need you to consecrate them i need you to consecrate aaron i need you to consecrate his sons i need you to consecrate the worshipers i need you to consecrate the the leading men and don't just put this on any ordinary person because there will be none like it in its composition and before we dig any deeper into preparation when i was looking at this again today it says um don't just put this on any ordinary person person because there is none like it uh in its composition and i just want to tell you right now that the oil that you carry yes you carry oil because god has anointed you it's not ordinary oil you're not an ordinary daughter you're not an ordinary woman he says this oil can't be for just any ordinary person it has to be for someone special it has to be for someone extraordinary and the minute that god anointed you you went from being an ordinary woman to a woman of standard a woman um, of greatness a woman who is extraordinary uh, you're not ordinary and I just need you to, I just need you to know that part on tonight so just tell your your, your sis or another uh, friend in the chat on tonight that I am not ordinary listen you are not ordinary Helena you're not ordinary angel you are not ordinary on tonight why because the word of God tells us so it tells us so so if someone is thinking that that you are being stuck up or conceited you just let them know no it's, it's not that i'm that it's just that i am i'm extraordinary because <laughs> god said it was he said so in his word he said that this oil should not be placed on an ordinary person and i'm not ordinary uh the oil you carry makes you an extraordinary woman uh because you are unique and what you carry is not ordinary so you should uh start to carry yourself or start to think of yourself in a manner um where you're um where you understand that how special you are to God. You know, when he says you are the daughter of the Most High King, that's unique. That is special. That's extraordinary. So start, as women, as daughters, we have to start carrying ourselves in that manner, in that manner, because God made us different. He truly made us different. And when God intended for you to uh, operate in his kingdom, for you to um, work in his kingdom, for you to do the things that he needs you to do in the kingdom, he intended for you to operate differently so then you that means you can't try to fit in with anybody else because you can't fit in even if you try to because the oil on you is not ordinary it's not ordinary it makes you unique so let's jump back into it so so moses is trying to be effective on tonight and he knows in order to be effective in the preparation of this tabernacle that god's presence uh, his anointing is going to be the key ingredient. So it's really important on tonight that Moses follows the, instruction, the instructions 
for preparation because after preparation uh, is going to come expectation, expectancy, and then we'll see the manifestation of what we've been expecting. And what the people are expecting on tonight from this tabernacle is God's presence, is for God to dwell among them. But in order to do that, there has to be some preparation. And it's God's anointing that is going to be the puzzle piece that makes what we do as, as believers effective. It has to be God's presence amen so uh, the Old Testament church and this is just a little history for you knew that the place where they worship could not be effective it could not be effective if God's presence was not there and that's why they followed God's instructions and you'll see many times in different um, uh, stories in the Bible where God gave instructions in the Old Testament of of what they needed to do to um, have his presence there and there had to be a uh, a level of preparation that took place for him to dwell among the people again they had to follow it line by line and precept by precept because they knew if there were uh if god's presence wasn't there and if they didn't prepare it the way he told them to, he was not going to dwell there at all. And listen, uh, it's just a reminder that we have to obey God. Whatever he's telling us to do, we have to listen because he's not going to keep cutting. It ain't even keep. He's just not going to cut no corners with us. And going into this next year, this next season, and many of us are looking for the open door for the open heaven. God says, I can't cut corners with you. What I need you to do is be obedient and hear from me. Listen and follow my instructions. Um, you got to do it my way. You can't go around it. You can't go under it. Uh, you can't make it uh, be comfortable for you. Whatever he is telling you to do. You have to do what you got to do what he says. And this is what we see Moses do on tonight because he says, I need your presence. I need you to dwell in this place. So whatever you're instructing me to do, however you want me to prepare, I will do it because I'm expecting of you. I'm expecting of you. And so the, he, God gave him the specifics of how to build the tabernacle. And we see this in verses uh, chapter 25 through 30 in Exodus. And I want you to go back and read that in your spare time. We see God single-handedly instructing Moses on how to get the glory back into the house of God. And in order to speak to Moses, he had to get him alone. And that's where we'll back up to Exodus chapter 24 and verse 2. Um, he says in verse 2, and I'm going to paraphrase this, I want you to uh, keep Moses. Uh, Moses, I want you to, to tell, uh, keep Aaron and the men and whoever else. They got to stay behind. They got to stay behind. They can't come with you on today. They got to keep their distance because I need you to come up here with me. I need you to come up here to the mountaintop with me. So I need everything else to be gone. Every every person, every animal. I need you to be separated from them because I need you here with me. He said, you come, you come here and you come alone. I need you in my presence by yourself. I want you to get as close as you can to me. And that's something we got to consider on tonight. We got to consider that on tonight, on tonight. And this is what I want you to consider. Okay. When it comes to preparation, the alignment and building of your life cannot and will not be done in the face of other people. What does that mean? God has to get you alone. And you're going to have to learn how to be comfortable being by yourself in solitude. Because a lot of times we don't like to be by ourselves. We don't. It reminds me of my grandmother because she doesn't like to be alone. She wants all the family to be around her all the time. But God says, I can't speak to you directly because I can't even get you close to me. I need you to be close to me so you can hear me. Because when you hear me, you'll know how to prepare for what you're expecting from me. Preparation expectation manifestation okay he said it says the alignment and building of your life 
can not and will not be done in the face of other people. He told Moses, keep them at a distance because I need you to come up here on the mountain. Read it for yourself. Exodus chapter 24, verses 2. He said, and here's the thing we have to remember. We only got one choice in this matter when it comes to God. Either we're going to be in his face or we're going to be in the face of people. Either we're going to be uh, people pleasers or we're going to choose to be a God pleaser. God says, I need you to be comfortable in being in solitude because I need you to get closer to me. Either you're going to walk with God or you're going to make a decision. You're going to walk with man. You got to make the choice on tonight. And Moses, he goes to the mountaintop. And, and, and I have to go back. You, you can't do both. You can't be in the face of people and be in the face of God at the same time. It is, it's either you're going to be in his face or... Or you're going to be in the face of people. You can't do both. They can't be simultaneous. They can't happen at the same time. So you got to make the choice on tonight. And and I, I thought about this too. If if God only just told Moses to, to just tell Aaron them to stay at a distance. And just think about what they had going on right then. Just, just stay back at a distance because I need to get you closer to me. How much does he have to break through to get to us, though? And I had to think about that. He just told him, just tell Aaron them to stand a distance. And for us, it ain't always people. Sometimes he can't even get us by ourselves because he has to try to break through um, all these different things we got going on in our lives. Like our, our cell phone. I got to get you away from your cell phone. I got to get you away from, from Instagram. I got to get you away from cell, uh, Facebook. How can I need to get you away from some things because I need to get you by yourself. I need to get you away from the phone just talking on the phone. And, and, and chit chatting how can I get you by yourself and and I know sometimes people always question because like uh I, I know for myself and I, I know in my household that for us we go on we go on sabbaticals where we say you know what you don't even see us commenting because sometimes we don't even be in the social media land because we say I can't hear I got to get away from this thing. And some of us get so attached to it. We wake up and the first thing we do is we pick up our phone and we, we're on Facebook. I got to, she said from TikTok. Yeah, you right. From TikTok because it becomes addictive. And the next thing you know, all you know is TikTok. All you know is Facebook. I got to make a post. I got to do this. I got to do that. And God says, I can't even get the message to you because you keep, you keep coming to me saying you're seeking my face and, and you're asking me because you keep asking of my hand, but you're not preparing yourself for what my hand can even do. So if he, if, if that's all it took for him to do for Moses, think about how much it takes for him, for us to break through to us. How can he, he, he break through to us so he can hear us? And he says, listen, ladies, women, I'm looking for some grown girls. I'm looking for, for some, some women who are ready to, to uh to earnestly seek me you're asking me for a door you're asking me to unlock a door but you're not doing anything to even prepare for what i'm what i got on the other side of this door and that should be our prayer right now lord just prepare me prepare me because i want to be prepared for the blessing because a lot of times we ask for things and we ain't even ready for it so i want you to prepare me for what's the door you're about to open because when I walk through all I can do is give you my yes I can't stumble I can't um uh think about how difficult that thing may be on the other side of the door um I just know that whatever you open for me it's my yes it's my yes amen so he says I need to pull you closer and I need you to be comfortable in seasons of solitude because sometimes you're gonna have to be alone okay you are some some people ain't gonna want to be around you they're gonna be like listen all you do is talk about the bible i don't want to be around you i don't want to talk to you right now uh they some people don't want to be around you because you're always positive some people don't want to be around you because you're always talking good and he says that's okay that's me that's me getting you into solitude. And I want you to be comfortable being in solitude um, because that's my intentional hand at this point uh, where uh, people, I'm removing people from around you who don't even think like me. 
And that, I, that's my prayer too, is that Lord, those people who don't even think like you, who are not even on the same page or the same walk I'm trying to walk in with you, remove them, remove them. And sometimes we, we, we don't want people to go because we become attached to them too. But some people, I always say that person was just for that season. I'm, you got to be okay with losing some people. You got to be okay with losing some people. Listen, the Bible says that God takes Moses away from the people. He takes them away. He takes them away from Aaron. He says, I need you to make some distance here. Um, he gets him away from Aaron, his brother, who he is very familiar with, y'all. He gets him away from Aaron, who happens to be his crutch because Aaron is also his help. Aaron is the person he always turns to. Aaron is the person who helps him get things done. He pulls him in closer from his help. He brings him up and he hides him on the mountaintop. And this is where God speaks with Moses in the cloud. We're still in verse, we're still in chapter 24. And this is where I want to put a pen on here tonight. I had to put this in my nose. Put a pen right here. Because if God had to do all of that, again, if he had to do all of that to speak to Moses, what does he have to do to speak to you? What does he have to break through to get to you? Um, th this now month, this month of now or never, you need to be asking God, just remove the distractions just remove the distractions because i need all the distractions to die so i can really hear from you i'm expecting of you i'm expecting of you and in my preparation i need to be able to hear from you and i'm not talking about hearing from you just on sunday morning at worship hearing from you just on tuesday or wednesday no this is a everyday preparation process yes you show right we would rather stick it out with people than god and that's why he says you need to learn how to be uh comfortable being by yourself be by yourself stick with me and why wouldn't I want to stick with him when he's been so faithful to me? He's never let me down. If any, if you should know anything by now, people, we, because of sin, we are designed to disappoint each other. But God is the only one who will never disappoint you. So yeah, Kenya, I'm sticking it out with him. So if I got to lose a friend or two and I have so far, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I'm expecting of him. I'm expecting, and we're going to get to expectation. Let's keep it moving, okay? And he, and again, he's not talking about just on Sunday hearing from him, Tuesday or Wednesday. He's talking about, I need an authentic relationship with you. And in order for me to get that, I need you to come closer to me. Come to the mountaintop and sit with me. <coughs> And sit with me. Moses knew that the glory of the Lord would not show up if he didn't prepare. If he didn't prepare. And that's what we see in Exodus chapter 25. He listened to everything God told him to. Every instruction on how to prepare. Every line. Every precept. He said, God's presence, I need it. And it won't come. It won't dwell if I don't prepare. And you have to remember this. That God will not bring his presence until you make the preparation. Presence does not come before preparation preparation and then his presence and maybe maybe just maybe that's the problem right now is that we haven't prepared and i'm not talking about just our physical home for preparation but i'm talking about this home right here this home right here have you truly prepared about it prepared and have you made room for yourself for the presence of god to even dwell in this home in this right here his presence will not show up if there has not been any preparation. Presence comes after pre preparation. I think I might put that on a on a sticky note from my desk. Presence comes after preparation. Lord, I want to prepare. I want to prepare. God, don't just come into my my junky house of a heart where bitterness is still there, unforgiveness is still there. Um um 
my my bad attitude is still there um my doubt my unbelief is sitting there don't just come into my junky house of a heart i need to clean this thing out there has to be a cleansing away lord help me to clean this this junk out help me to make room for you help me to make room for you yes prepare yourself for God. We have to prepare ourselves for God uh, because I want to feel his glory. And I know I'm not going to be able to feel it as long as my house is still junky. You know, some of us got some messy houses and that's physical too. We need to clean up a little bit. All right. Listen, some of us got some messy houses. We got some junk. You know how you get your garage and you just start, I'm going to put this out in the garage. I'm going to sit that out in the garage. And next thing you know, your garage is full of all this stuff. We got to clean up some stuff tonight, ladies. We got to clean it up. He says, yes, give me a clean heart, Lord. I need you to prepare this house prepare this house and that's what Moses was doing on tonight he was making preparation God uh, I need you to um, I need to experience your presence because I'm expecting of you you're expecting good health you're expecting increase you're expecting finances I'm expecting this house I'm expecting this job but if I'm going to expect I better be preparing I better be preparing. Lord, I am expecting of you. And because I'm expecting of you, I am going to prepare. And there are some things, y'all, and I can tell you for myself personally, that I am believing God for right now, clear up to 2025. And it, it, they, some of the things I'm believing him for may sound crazy, may sound like I can't, it's not going to get done with my, the situation I'm already in. But guess what? I'm believing God for it and because I know he can do it but in the process of me expecting him for these big things i'm asking him to bless me on a big scale i'm preparing for it right now as if it's already done as if it's already done and while we're talking about it i want to repeat this from last week preparation is a sign of expectation to God. God says, I see you preparing. That means you're expecting. You're expecting of something from me. I see you preparing. And this is where we go back. We're going to travel back to the widow woman one more time this week. She prepared the jars in her house according to what the prophet instructed her. Second Kings chapter four. And let's start at verse three. And I'm reading from the new King James version. And it says, then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbor, neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Listen, this woman on one side of her door is nothing but tragedy. It's nothing but tragedy. And she goes to the prophet and she says, I, basically said, I'm looking for an open door. I'm looking for an open door. What do I need to do for this open door? What do I need to do for heaven to open for me? My husband has died. He was the breadwinner, but hey, he's gone. No life insurance policy was set up for us. The creditors are coming and they say they're going to come and take my sons, but I have nothing. I am down to my last. I'm down to my last, my last bit of oil. And he tells her in verse three, go borrow vessels from everywhere. He's giving her the instructions on how to prepare, on how to prepare. Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. He said, don't get any that already got anything in it. I need you to get empty. And don't just ask for a few. Gather as many as you can. Yes, faith to see what I can not see listen she's down to her last and she says i have nothing except a small jar of olive oil that small bit of of hope that she had on tonight that small bit of of oil that that little glimpse of hope was all god needed on tonight to change her life and yes somebody on here on tonight has you're down to your last you down to your last bit of hope on tonight, your last bit of strength, your last bit of joy. You may be down to your very last dime on tonight, but God says, all I need is your little bit. All I need is your little bit. All I need is your little bit. All I need is your little bit that you have left because I can make a miracle happen. I can make a miracle happen, but I need, I need, he says, this is God. I need your little bit. I need your little bit. 
And when we read verse 3, he says, listen, go get jars, empty ones, and not just a few. Go borrow. And you see, the preparation preceded the poor. There was no poor first. There had to be some preparation first, some preparation first. So she had to prepare the jars in order to have something to pour into. And we can't want God to bless us um, and not prepare. This is just this is this is just an indication that we can't want God to bless us and not prepare. So I have to ask you, just like I asked you last week, where are your jars? Where are your jars? He didn't say just go get another jar. Don't go get two jars. He said go borrow jars from everywhere. Empty ones. He said and not just a few. And not just a few. Where are your jars on tonight? Because you want a miracle, but there are no jars. There are no jars. You want a breakthrough, but there are no jars. You're asking for increase, but there are no jars. You're asking for good health, but there are no jars. There are no jars. Where are your jars on tonight? He says, I want to give you something to pour out, but I need to make sure that you are prepared, prepared for what's about to pour. There has to be some preparation. So she borrowed these jars, y'all, and he said not just a few. She borrowed them. Uh, verse 4 says, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you. And your sons then pour into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. Verse 5, so she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Listen, every time another version says every time she asked her son for a vessel, it kept, she kept pouring. She kept pouring. There was some preparation that preceded the poor on tonight. She borrowed and prepared the empty jars because she expected prophecy to be fulfilled. The prophet told her, if you go get the empty jars and then you be shut the door behind you and you begin to pour, they will be filled. And she expected all on tonight and God met her at her level of expectation. There was preparation and then there was expectation. She borrowed with the expectation. And I love that it's in all caps. Yes, expectation. When all the jars were filled, the oil stopped pouring. But God could not go past her level of preparation. So God is going to fulfill what you prepare for. And again, uh, uh, God, somebody is saying, well, I've been preparing and God still hasn't moved. I've still I've been preparing since the 21 days. I've still been preparing, but God still hasn't moved. And I want to I want to remind you of this because I looked at a farmer today. Uh, farmers, they wait. They wait with expectancy. And while they're waiting, what are they still what are they still doing? preparing for the harvest so while a farmer waits he prepares for the harvest he gets re he gets ready he doesn't sit around thinking i wonder if this is going to grow or not no he expects it to grow so he waits in expectancy. So while you're preparing, don't think once you have followed the instructions of preparation that there, for some of us, there's going to be a waiting period because God still has to work on us for what we're expecting. He says, I need you to be ready for what's on the other side of this door. Yes. Because when you do that, you can reap the full benefits. And I want full benefits, y'all. I want full benefits. So my question to you on tonight, I'm going to let you go. What is your level of expectation? What is your level of expectation? And not just in general, but but what is what is your expectation even on tonight? What, are you, what were you expecting of God on tonight even in this one hour? What were you expecting of God tonight? Were you, did you just come just to come? Just to say, I'm just going to show up online so they can see my name? Or were you really expecting God to uh, to say something to you uh, that that correlates or that goes with the situation you're in right now? What are you, what is your level of expectation? 
What is it? Uh, what do you expect when you come to the altar to be prayed for? Do you just go to the altar because he says, come to the altar, we're having prayer? Or are you, when you go there, are you really expecting God to move? Are you really expecting God to move? Um, you, we got to get out of the, the attitude of, I hope something happens. I don't even like the way my mouth just did that. Um, <laughs> I hope, but I hope, <laughs> I hope something happens we have to get out of that that attitude of that or not that attitude but that mindset that perspective we have to change our perspective uh to i know god is going to do something i know it it may not happen when i think it's supposed to happen but i know that god's timing is perfect so while i'm waiting and this waiting period is going to be uncomfortable but this waiting period may be my moment of solitude where i prepare this house for what I'm expecting. For what I'm expecting. Amen. Listen. Preparation and expectation. These are the two keys that will bring more of the manifestation. You probably was like, when are we going to get to manifestation? Those are the two key ingredients. But it has to be preparation. Then it has to be expectation. And when we reach those two keys, this is, the mani- this is what brings the manifestation of his spirit as we press forward through the rest of this year and go into 2022 god says what is your level of expectancy like what are you really expecting of me what are you expecting of me i have some slides that i never put up here and i'm gonna run through those really quick and we got three minutes and i'm gonna let you go but in preparation i want you to remember this the alignment and building of our lives cannot and will not be done in the face of other people we need to be seeking god's face and we have to become comfortable in seasons of solitude okay presence comes after preparation we're asking god to dwell in us we want to feel his glory but have we prepared our homes for him preparation is a sign of expectation meaning your ability and your drive to prepare is a sign to god that you are expecting him to do just what he said amen expectation god cannot go but so far past your level of expectation what are you expecting god to do behind this new door expect god to do the impossible we have to start expecting god to do the unthinkable i told you personally and and i'm not going to share my family knows what my personal expectations are but i'm expecting him to do something that that sounds a little bit crazy right now based on my current situation but i already i've already saying that and i told you i'm not claiming anything i'm conquering it i've already conquered that it's going to be done in 2022 before that year is over i'm expecting god to do it because i know he can i know he can but there's some preparation some things i gotta prepare on this side of the door before he unlocks it but while you are in waiting wait expectantly psalms 130 verse 5 says i wait expectantly trusting god to help for he has promised a heart that is expected will see greater manifestations of god's spirit that's dr george hill listen i'm gonna go back to psalms 130 verse 5 put that in the comments for me i wait expectantly trusting god to help for he has promised y'all the word says god's promises are yes and amen and i i'm just expecting those promises to be uh to manifest themselves from now november through 2022 and beyond because what i'm expecting of him to do he told me already steph you better get prepared You better get prepared. And how do I prepare? Just like Moses, I got to go to the mountaintop. And that oil, that oil that he's preparing, he told told him that oil is not for anyone ordinary. It's for someone extraordinary. So that oil that I have, that God has given me, I'm going to tell you the ingredients of the oil and then I'm going to let you go and what they represent. But that holy oil is it has myrrh it has cinnamon it has cassia in it and it has olive in it olive oil and you can see this in exodus uh uh, chapter 25 when he breaks down what the oil is myrrh means freedom it comes from the piercing in the side of a rugged uh thorny tree which represents the piercing of the body of jesus 
cinnamon. Uh, it doesn't have a pleasant odor when it's ripe when it's uh, green, but the older it gets, when it dies, when cinnamon dies, that's when we, we see that or uh, smell that sweet aroma. And cinnamon just represents that we have to die to ourselves in order to be useful. God says, I can use you when you die to yourself. When you die to yourself, this is part of the preparation. So he says, listen, I need you to die to yourself. And then cassia. Cassia is a plant that only grows at an elevation above 8,000 feet, which means that it only grows on mountaintops. So just like Moses, you got to go to the mountaintop. What does that mean? That means I need to go and seek his face. I need to get in my prayer closet. I need to be fervently praying and being in his presence. Because when cassia uh, grows on the mountaintop in order to get it, they got to take it out of the dirt. They got to dig it up out of the dirt. And what does that mean? That means that God says, come here, come closer to me so I can dig you up out of the dirt. I need to dig you up out of the dirt. And then there's olive oil. And we know how olive oil, oil is, right? I was reading this today. Olive oil. Olive oil has to be beaten, it has to be squeezed, it has to be pressed, it has to be stomped, it has to be crushed to be useful, it has to be bruised to be useful, it has to be scarred to be useful, and after it's gone through all of this, all you get is just a few drops of oil. <laughs> all you get is a few drops of oil. But God says, this is part of the preparation. I need to beat you. I need you to go through the beating process. You're going to have some scars. You got to get dug up out of that dirt. Yeah, you got to get dug up out of that dirt. You got to die to yourself. This is part of the preparation. Because while you're expecting of me, I need you to go through all this. This is that holy oil that I have in you. And he says, once you've done this, once you uh, die to yourself, once you've been dug up out of the dirt, once you've been beaten, once you've been pierced like myrrh, I can, I can, you're useful to the kingdom. I can make use of you. You have the oil. You have the holy anointing. I will open the door. You are prepared for what's on the other side of the door. Lord, I'm expecting of you. Preparation, expectation, and then manifestation. Then manifestation. Amen. Listen, let's go ahead and and um, and uh, get prepared to close out on tonight. But I just have to remind you, because open doors, open heaven appears everywhere I, I turn. Um, e everything I see, I keep sending it to my sister. I'm like, do you not realize that every time we look at something, it speaks of open doors? And I know that God is opening some doors. He's opening them right now. But uh, for some of us, we have to continue to wait in expectancy and in that waiting period, he says, I need you to be prepared. I need you to be prepared. So that junky house, let's start preparing it. Let's start preparing it. Allow me to dig you up out of the dirt and don't be ashamed of it. Because every commodity in the earth, this is economics right here. Every commodity in the earth um, comes from dirt. Every valuable commodity comes from dirt. It comes from dirt. So God says, don't, don't be ashamed of where I'm digging you up out of because you're valuable. I need you. I need you for the kingdom, but you got to let me do this. You got to be prepared. I need you to go through the preparation process. And while you're preparing, just like the farmer, I need you to wait in expectancy. Wait in expectancy. Wait in expectancy. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, on today we are, are standing in expectancy knowing that you are going to surprise us, God. That you are going to blow our minds, God. That you are going to do exceedingly and abundantly, God. So on tonight, God, that's our portion. Abundance, God. Our portion is increased, God. We're, uh, we're asking for, uh, we're expecting favor, God, for every door that we walk through, God. We're expecting more of your grace, God. God, for every door that we walk through, God. Lord, we're expecting more of your mercy for every door that we walk through. So on tonight, God, we are uh, preparing ourselves. Your daughters are preparing ourselves on tonight, God. We are in preparation season. We are in the mending season so that when we cast out our nets, we can catch the big draw on tonight, God. So on tonight, God, we ask that you continue to prepare us. Continue to change our perspective, God. Change our mindsets on tonight, God. On 
tonight, God. We won't just hope that something happens, God, but we will know that you are about to do something miraculous, God, that you are about to do something great, God, that you are going to do something that is unthinkable, God, that seems impossible to others, God. You are going to do that in our lives, God. So on tonight, God, we are waiting patiently in expectancy and preparing for the harvest so that we can reap the full benefits on tonight, God. So we're expecting good health, God. We're expecting increase, God. Lord, we're expecting finances, God. We're inspe we're expecting employment on tonight, God. Open those doors for your daughters on tonight, God. And when you open those doors, God, our, our answer will be yes. Yes to your will, God. Yes to your way, God. Yes to whatever it is you would have us to do, God. Lord, we just want to be uh, daughters who, who do your work, God, who shine for you, God, who let others know who you are and what you've been doing in our lives and what you're about to do in our lives. Lord, we're expecting. And in this month of now or never, God, it is now or never. We are, we are doing what we have to do now to prepare for what you are about to do. We're expecting of it right now, God. We're not waiting for December. We're not waiting for January, God. We're doing the work right now, God. So right now, God, I ask that you bless abundantly, God, that you bless exceedingly on tonight in the lives of your daughters. Now, God, we, we lift up our sister, Sister Cheryl Davis, on tonight, God. I ask that you comfort her family in this time of bereavement, God. Give her the comfort, God, that she needs, God. Uh, give her the understanding that she needs, God. Uh, wrap your loving arms around her on tonight, God. Lord, we continue to lift up our senior women, God. Charlie Cole, Dorothy Johnson, Midge Ingram, Charlotte Tidwell, Excuse me, Sister Lucy Herschel on tonight, God. We lift them up, God. We thank you, God, for for those women, God. We thank you for their wisdom, God. We thank you for um, them carrying the torch for us on tonight, God. Now, God, we lift up our sister, Sister Trivia Jordan on tonight, God. Lord, you know um, what she is going through on tonight, God. So I ask that you continue to lift her up, God. Uh, give her the help that she needs in every area of her life, God. The help that she needs in every area of her life, God, so that she can do your will and not hers, God, on tonight, God. So we lift her up on tonight, God. Lord, I ask that you continue to bless our church family on tonight. Bless the Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. You know what our church stands in need of, God. So I ask right now, God, that you bless. We're expecting of you to do some big things in the life of our church, God. And we know that you can do it. We know that you will do it. So, Lord, we're expecting of you. Now, God, I ask that you continue to lift up our pastor, God. Make him strong, God. Um, give him knowledge, God. Give him understanding, God. Continue to guide him as he guides your people, God. Lord, we thank you for our pastor on tonight, God. But we're expecting of you, God, to do big things in his life, God. Because we know that if you will move in his life, God, that it's just going to be a trickle-down effect on your people on tonight, God. So, I ask now, God, that you move move in his life on tonight, God. Help him to uh, make the decisions, God, that represent your kingdom, God, that represent who you are on tonight, God. Uh, Lord, continue to give him the knowledge that he needs to carry out the assignment that is on his life on tonight, God. Now, God, we continue to give you all the honor, all the glory that you are deserving of on tonight, God, and forevermore. Lord, we are expecting a expecting of you on tonight god so while we're expecting we're going to continue to prepare for this harvest we are going to continue to wait in our mending season on tonight god lord we thank you and we love you we pray this prayer in the mighty name of jesus amen amen listen ladies uh next tuesday is our last bible study of the year of the year and guess what we're still talking about preparation and expectation. Actually, we're going to be talking about the evidence. You're going to see the evidence of a preparation, and we're going to take a look at that on next Tuesday. And that's going to finish out our year. But I hope that this word uh, that, that we've been looking at, uh, these three words, preparation, expectation, and manifestation, can carry us to the first of the year so that we can continue to be in preparation season because I know I know that God is about to do something big and for some of us he's already doing it doors opened on today y'all 
door is opened on today for some people, for some women, for some ladies, for some members of the church. Doors were already opening. Doors opened on last week, and doors are going to be opening every day. But I just ask that you stay in prep preparation mode. Prepare, prepare your home. Prepare your home for what God is about to do on the other side of the door. On the other side of the door. It's open door season. Yes, evidence of the preparation. Listen, it's 8 o'clock. We are one minute over. Let's go. Let's have a good night. Hey, don't forget that tomorrow is Live in 45 Bible Study at 7 p.m. with Pastor Carter. Also, on Saturday, we have a live recording at 2.30 p.m. In, at the church, your presence is requested. Uh, please come. We still have in-person uh, service on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., of course. But on Saturday, we have a special sermon live recording with Pastor Carter at 2.30 p.m. So if you can make your way to the sanctuary on, on Saturday at 2.30, please, please come and join us. And then we'll see you bright and early on Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. on the line uh, with Sister Faith Forte. And then at 10 a.m. for our worship service that will be online as well as in person. Listen, ladies, these are our announcements for tonight. You guys have a great, a great evening. And I will see you online tomorrow night. Tomorrow night for Live in 45. Don't forget about Live in 45. Amen. Listen, greater, greater is coming. And just like the hour, some of you may have felt like you broke through the shaking, the beating, and the pressing. You went through all of that for your own to flow. Now your greater is coming. If it had not been for the shaking, I never would have been ready for the making. No. If it had not been for the beating, I would have never knew how anointed I would be.
Thank you for the shaking. Thank you for the beating. Thank you for the 